another national championship game, another comeback, and another set of last second shots. Last night, the Irish gave the world what they wanted, another instant classic. But what they couldn't deliver on this time was another national title. Perfection. It rarely shows its face, but it did Saturday night here at the LA Memorial Coliseum when Notre Dame capped off an undefeated season with a 24 to 17 win over their rival in USC, which likely puts them among the top four teams in college football this season. And happy 2019 everyone and, and welcome to hockey's fans favorite New Year's tradition, the Winter Classic. This year it was brought to you in the house that Rockney built and over 76,000 people came out to brave the outdoors today and see the Blackhawks host the Bruins here in Notre Dame Stadium. And this original six rivalry lived up to its expectations. It's a 2-2 game in the third period and Matt Grizzlick winds up with a point shot. It's deflected in front and Sean Curley scoops up the rebound and throws it in the ropes. Bruins with the go-ahead goal. It is 3-2 in the final period. Hi, Jennifer, like you said, Muffa McGraw does it all. And yesterday she proved she's socially conscious when her comments about gender equality went viral. But the head coach Hall of Famer wears many hats and she's actually pretty fashion conscious as well. Do you think your coaching staff is the best dressed in college basketball? Oh, absolutely. It was moving day here at Harbor Shores for the third round of the Senior PGA Championship. And no one in the field of 156 moved more than Paul Broadhurst. Broadhurst birdied six on the front nine to card a 64 to tie the lowest third round score in the Senior PGA Championship history. The first day was frustrating. I didn't put particularly well. Actually in the basement of Purcell Pavilion at Notre Dame Basketball's Ring of Honor, joined by all of the other legends here at Notre Dame. I thought it was appropriate because I do believe before long we could see another photo added to this wall. That of course being Arike Agumbawale as she passed this girl right here, Skylar Diggins-Smith, to become Notre Dame's all-time leading scorer tonight, right? Like you said, Pete, the Irish are 1-0 in ACC play in what head coach Muffin McGraw calls their best performance yet. And the stats sure did reflect that, including those of junior guard Jackie Young, who posted 16 points, grabbed six boards, and had two assists. Young, of course, is still Indiana High School basketball's all-time leading scorer. But today, she joined another elite group as she netted her 1,000th point in her college career. At this point, the Irish are old pros at this part of the tournament, but that same team just keeps seeming to stand between them and getting out of the regional round. Of course, that team being Stanford. In fact, the two teams have mes met the last four out of the last five seasons. Now, for a veteran Notre Dame squad, that history should be kind of comforting. But the pesky Cardinal has taken down Notre Dame senior class not once, but twice before. And the Irish have done it again. Notre Dame is headed back to the Final Four for a second straight season. They do so by overcoming their lowest first half scoring of the year and work their way out of a seven point halftime deficit. But for this Notre Dame veteran squad, they said their confidence never wavered. Came in down seven. We were like, here we are again. Uh, we know what to do. Like, it's really a matter of us doing it. It wasn't, it wasn't really um, like structural problems. It was really just not grabbing the rebound and missing shots. So we had to grab the rebound and put, put the ball in the basket. Coming at halftime, it's kind of um, just like a punch in the gut being down when you're not really used to it being a, a team like ours. But I think just having faith and being confident in ourselves and being able to execute the plan. And with that faith, they took down Stanford 84 to 68 on the one year anniversary of that historic national championship win. I think last year when you guys won the national championship, your first line was April Fool's Day is now my favorite holiday. Yeah, so I want to know. <laughs> we're, we're pretty, we're three and zero on April Fool's Day. So I'm, I'm liking it. So the Irish leave Chicago with a regional trophy in hand, which gets them one step closer to a repeat national title. Because, you know, we're not done. Uh, we haven't reached our, our goals yet. You know, obviously just speaks about the talent of, you know, the people I get to play with every day. You know, we have five people who can be all Americans, five people who can score 30 any night. So I think uh, it's just been really special. Yeah, we got four down. <laughs> and two to go. The Irish will face a familiar foe in Yukon when they get a rematch with the Huskies come Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time.
for now. Reporting from the Elite Eight, where the Irish have emerged as regional champs. I'm Olivia Ray, WSBT 22 Sports.